Free agency is here, and there's a couple of guys that I want to talk about today. One very familiar face and one guy that just won a World Series that the Cubs could possibly pursue. We're going to talk about Anthony Rizzo and Blake Trinan right here on the Cubs Baseball Channel. Make sure you like and subscribe. Give us a thumbs up. Hit the bell. Cubs fans, you know how to do that. Cardinals fans, ah, eh, you guys might be a little confused there. All right, let's get this thing going. Go Cubs. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome to the Cubs Baseball Channel. I'm Mick Gillespie, and we're talking some Cubs baseball. Kind of an exciting time right now, figuring out what the Cubs are going to do to try to be a true contender again, and uh, if they're going to spend some money in this offseason. I feel like they're handcuffed a little bit right now with some of the decisions that they made to spend a few years ago, and they really haven't gotten the money's worth out of some of these players like Dansby Swanson, for instance, you gave him $177 million and he might be worth about 50, right? So you're hoping that maybe he bounces back and has a, a year that would equal a salary. And then, uh, you know, what are you going to do with a, the outfield situation? You know, you know that Cody Bellinger's returning. What about the guys in AAA that are going to be ready to play this year in the big league? So there's a lot of decisions to be made. But we're going to talk about a couple of other ones. Hey, and also, I know everybody wants me to bring up Juan Soto. I think the Cubs would be fools not to go after Juan Soto. I think that he's the premier player that you take the risk on with the big-time contract. He's just been so consistent. He's put up Hall of Fame numbers so far in his career. He's still young, and he'd be a guy you'd just put right in the middle of that lineup and let him go. All right, so let's let's bounce off of that and let's get into uh, today's show. And again, I'm uh, Mick Gillespie at Broadcaster Mick on the socials, and I uh, love talking to you guys. And thanks for hanging out with us on the channel today. All right, for, right out of the shoot, could Anthony Rizzo return? Uh, I think that he could return, but the answer is: Do you want him to return? I mean, would it be great for you know? nostalgia to have Rizzo back. I mean, as a part-time player, he's always hurt now. And that's why the Yankees decided not to pick up the option in his contract. They, they, they paid him money not to have to re-sign him. Now there's a chance that they may say, Hey, you know what? We'll work a deal out with him, even though we didn't pick up his option, you know, and instead of paying him, you know, the, the big contract that he was going to get. And I want to say it was like 15 or $17 million somewhere in there. They paid six just to say, Hey, you know what? You can walk away from that, and they'll probably save money. Now, what about the Cubs? Is there going to be a big um, a big market for Anthony Rizzo? And the answer to me is I don't think so. Uh, I mean, not only has he dealt with injuries, but played 92 games this year for the Yankees, and he hit 228, and he had eight home runs and 35 runs batted in. I mean, that, that screams role player. You know, he was a, a former – superstar I thought with the Cubs I mean back in you know 2014 15 16 17 18 you know he's one of the best defenders I've ever seen I mean he has the soft hands but he hasn't won a gold glove since 2020 and his numbers have done a nosedive since that season you know from a guy that hit you know in the 290 range every season or around there you know, he, he's he been kind of a 230s hitter since then and hit 228, you know, in that average range, some years 240, some years lower. But um, the then, you know, what about the power numbers? Well, last year he only hit 12 home runs and uh, only had 41 runs batted in and only played 99 games. And in 22, uh, you know, a better season, right? 32 home runs, 75 runs batted in. That was the last time he was really healthy. He was a DH, played first base. But what would he do with the Cubs? So you got Michael Bush and you got Cody Bellinger, okay? And and then I'm wondering what you're going to do with Owen Casey. You, got, you can't forget about Owen Casey because I'm telling you guys right now, he is a, a future star and he looked great 
in AAA Iowa last year. He's a young guy, but he's coming up. What are you going to do with him? You just like sit him, sit, let him sit in the minor leagues. He's another left-handed hitter. So what do you do? I mean, Rizzo would be great as far as like helping guys, uh, you know, learn how to play the game every day. It'd be great for fans because he could sign autographs. But is is he a player that's going to contribute on this particular team? And is this the kind of player that you need? And I, I'm going to say as much as I'd love to see him back in a Cubs uniform again, the answer to me is no. There's just no chance because there's there's nowhere for him to play. Those spots need to be occupied by guys like Owen Casey and not guys like Anthony Rizzo. And it's one of the reasons that the Cubs are in this predicament right now where they've wasted time where they could have put guys in the big leagues and let them start cutting their teeth instead of putting them in the minors. And then, well, the whole logic is, well, this guy needs to play every day. But you've watered down the minor leagues so much, and I've said this over and over again, that it's a waste of time there. You can, because the pitching is so much better at the big leagues, the game is so much better at the big leagues that leaving guys in AAA to me is, you know, if, I just think it's a waste of time. I think you need to get those guys experience. So like guys like Patrick Wisdom on a roster of a team that's not making the playoffs and Miles Masterpony and those kind of guys, I would much rather have, you know, your guys like, like Shaw and, and like Casey in the big leagues, getting at bats, learning how to play in that, you know, in that level of competition. Right. So to me, I don't think this is a fit for the Cubs, but any, there's that nostalgic part that you say, well, you know what? It would be great to have someone on the team that was part of the 2016 World Series because it's the only one that we've won since, you know, what, the 1900s. So, I mean, it's <laughs> we got one, and those guys are special to us, right? It's not going to be Kyle Hendricks because he's not coming back. Now, the other guy that the people are starting to talk about is that the Cardinals may trade Wilson Contreras but would the Cubs do a deal with the Cardinals? They're not really a trade partner. When you have a rival like the Cardinals, uh, you don't normally trade with them because you don't want to make a Lou Brock type deal. You just don't want to give up one of your stars, and then all of a sudden they go there and become a Hall of Famer, and you got to eat that all the time. So you don't see, and they don't want to trade him back, and then all of a sudden, you know, he's a he's an All Star catcher again. So, but I'd love to have him back. Cubs should have just signed him in the first place. The the catcher's position in the major leagues right now is a black hole. There's not a lot of guys that can play it. Cubs are going to have to go out. In my mind, maybe you trade some of your top notch talent to get a legitimate catcher that's under contract for a while. So, so maybe you do that with the Cardinals. Um, you know, are there better options than Contreras? Yeah, but I'll tell you what. I mean, he's still amongst the best options out there, and he was way better than what the Cubs had behind the plate over the last couple of years. So, and he was on the World Series team. All right, uh, one more guy to talk about. And when you you talk about uh, the area of this team where the Cubs need the most help, it's relief pitch. If there was one area this year that the Cubs really needed help in, that would be the bullpen. And Blake Trident of the L.A. Dodgers is a very coveted reliever that people expect the Cubs could go after. And he was part of that Dodgers bullpen. You saw him in the World Series. He was so good. Uh, this past year, he had a 7-3 and three record and a 193 ERA in 50 games. Missed 2023, but... 2022 was fantastic. Same thing with 2021, all but the Dodgers. As a matter of fact, in uh, 21, he pitched in 72 games and he had a six and five record in a 199 ERA. He came back in 22 or uh, before he got hurt in 22. Same thing, one and one, a 180 ERA, and then picked it up right where he left off. So he's become one of the best options that you could possibly get out of the bullpen. And you would figure that the Cubs are going to look for this. Now, he's not a closer, but he's one of those guys who helps you get to the uh, the end of the game, uh, you know, able to hold games down, able to throw strikes, and he l really limits the hits. And, and this season, he only gave up 33 hits in 46 and two-thirds innings. Doesn't walk a lot of batters either. Throws a lot of strikes. And uh, this is someone that it's being reported that the Cubs could be very interested in. He was with the Dodgers for four years, the Nationals before that, and with with um, uh, Oakland in between those two teams. So it's going to be really interesting to kind of see if the Cubs are, as they're rumored, going after Trident. But 
I'm looking for right off the bat. They didn't, they didn't renew with Drew Smiley. They're going to go out and they're going to try to put some money into that bullpen. The starting pitching has been pretty solid. I still think they're going to try to get an elite starter to go in the front of that rotation. Maybe a Blake Snell as reported, but to me, I think it's a Corbin Burns. I think you go out if you're the Cubs and you you spend money. And I told you guys the, the reason why I feel so confident in that is with all the problems that the White Sox were having, just as a business decision. You know, you could you could bury them and help yourself at the same time. And the way that this roster is constructed, you need you need the lead singer, but you got a great group of backup singers. So <laughs> you got to go out there and put those frontline guys. Uh, with this crew. So uh, this could be one of those moves to keep an eye on. And again, you know, we'll be doing that throughout the uh, off season, the hot stove season, get in the comment section. Tell me what you guys think. Great to talk to you today. Like, and subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. That's a way of saying go Cubs and uh, subscribe please, because that's what helps this channel go. And the interaction is why we do it. So thank you so much. And we'll talk to you guys again tomorrow. And uh, remember, uh, if, if something breaks, probably jump on and talk about that as well, like the Cody Bellinger thing on Saturday. I was surprised. I thought he was going to opt out. Probably wouldn't have done a live show had he opted out. But the fact that he opted in was a curveball to a lot of us. And, you know, we kind of look back on it now. And and selfishly, uh, you know, you you are always kind of hoping to find that 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 big piece, the Andre Dawson type of free agent. But at the same time, you know, the more I think about it, it is great to have your best player back at least for one more year. So I, I'm sure he'll opt out next year because that contract goes way down. But the market wasn't there. He likes playing for the Cubs. You know, the spring training facility is not far from where he where he's uh, you know he's from. So anyway, and and it's an easy organization to work with. It's the best one in baseball. Thanks for hanging out with us, guys. Go Cubs.